an increasing number of uh, human brain diseases um, and cancers and other diseases in the body are now being recognized to have defects in the way they regulate their RNA, not their DNA. So um, our laboratory has gotten interested in this because um, we've been studying a group of human, rare human brain diseases that are associated with common cancers, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, lung cancer, and others. And in these diseases, it turns out, that what is fundamentally being um, dysregulated, what's fundamentally going wrong, is uh, the control of RNA, not DNA. We've been very interested in developing ways to look at RNA-protein interactions in a living tissue. Um, to do that, we have developed a way to link together RNA-protein complexes uh, in a living tissue um, by UV irradiating that tissue. And that causes a covalent bond or a fusion between the RNA and the protein right at the point where they're bound to each other. So with those fusions made inside a living tissue, we can break the tissue open, uh, purify the RNA and its bound regulatory protein, and use that to understand how this regulation occurs and where it's occurring and what the consequence of that, of that binding is. So, with these fusion methods in hand, we've now applied high throughput sequencing methods so that we can uh, isolate the points of regulation of the RNA protein uh, complexes and look at all the points that are regulated in the brain in a single experiment. So what's exciting about this new technology is that we can look at uh, this new kind of gene regulation, RNA regulation, in a comprehensive way and in a single experiment get an insight both into basic science questions, how the brain works, how it's complicated, why we think so differently from a worm, um, and at the same time uh, begin to develop insights into human diseases like fragile X mental retardation or brain degeneration or cancer, all of which are instances in which we think RNA regulation or dysregulation is really important to understand. People have traditionally looked to DNA to explain um, how we're different and how we're complicated. And there's something of an existential crisis in the molecular biology field when the human genome was sequenced, because as exciting as it was, there was a bit of a disappointment, which was there's only 25,000 genes in humans, and there's also 25,000 genes in C. elegans. We like to think of ourselves as more complicated than the worm, and uh, people scratch their heads for a while as to where does all the complexity come from. The ultimate goal, of course, of trying to make that kind of understanding, the ultimate goal of trying to make an understanding of human disease is to drive towards the development of new treatments.